Alright, so we already did elimination, where you just had to either add or subtract. And usually that means that they were stacked nicely. So if I have like 2x plus 2y, the next line might say negative 2x plus 4y. And they just dropped out. And if that wasn't the case, sometimes maybe it didn't have the minus sign here, which meant that we just changed everything. And don't forget, you'd have to change the other side, too. So we made them stack nicely. That was just using addition. But now we're going to have to multiply. And they structure this so that it's staged, so we're going to multiply one equation to eliminate. By the end of all of these notes, you'll uh, multiply by 2. Um, you'll multiply both equations, excuse me, so that they have to match up. And all of these instructions are pretty much the same. Use elimination to solve the system of equations. So we'll jump into this first problem here. It's always nice to rewrite the problem. 3x plus 4y equals 6. 5x plus 2y equals a negative 4. And no matter what you would do on this, if you were to just try to do it like the last section, then you'd either get 8x combining these, or you'd subtract and get like a negative 2x or a positive 2x depending on the direction you went. And the same deal here, you'd get either 6y or 2y. So they don't work out nicely. But if I could just simply change 1, like either get a 3 to where it can be multiplied by something that gives me 5. So what times 3 gives me 5? Well, you'd have to do 5 thirds. Does that sound like a fun choice? Absolutely not. So we're going to avoid that. So when I first look at this, I'm like, well, it would be nice if I could deal with the x's. But maybe I move my eyes over to the y's. Well, 1 is a 4, and 1 is a 2. So maybe I take the 2, and what could I multiply 2 by to give me 4? Well, that would be 2. And since I want these to cancel out, I would choose negative 2. And the way that I like to structure these is I like to sneak parentheses around the whole problem, and then I'm going to show that that's going to be getting multiplied by negative 2. Now as we set this up, skip a line. Let's rewrite the first equation, 3x plus 4y equals 6. But then I'm going to rewrite the changed equation. I'll make this purple so it lines up. So this negative 2 is going to distribute to everything. So my new equation that I create from the second is 2 times 5 gives me 10, but it's negative 10x. 2 times 2 gives me a minus 4y, and that's why I chose that to begin with. And then a negative 2 times a negative 4 gives me a positive 8. I have two equations. They're still from those, and I'm going to now end up eliminating my y. So 3x minus 10x gives me negative 7x, and then 6 plus 8 gives me... 14. Dividing both sides by negative 7, I've eliminated y and I've figured out that x is negative 2. So now I'll plug that back in. I got all this space up here, so I'll use that space. I think I'll plug this into the first equation. So I'm going to write 3, so I'm, I'm using this equation by the way, 3 times a negative 2 plus four y equals six. I have negative six plus four y equals six. Add six to both sides. Four y equals twelve. Divide by four. And I get y is three. And as I've written this out, and I've ended up with integers as answers, usually that's a good sign, telling me that, you know, if the textbook isn't being super severe here, I probably have the right answer. But it's a good idea to check it anyway. So we'll check it in this first equation. 3 times a negative 2 gives me a negative 6. 4 times 3 gives me 12 and negative 6 
plus 12 does give me 6. I'm checking this all in my head. Moving on to the next one. 5 times a negative 2 gives me negative 10. I'm holding on to that in my memory. 2 times 3 gives me 6. And a negative 10 plus 6 gives me negative 4. So after I've checked both of these, I know I'm absolutely right. I'm good to go. Now let me point out a couple of things. This was us just rewriting the problem and then planning. Like we figured out what term would I multiply it by. This was me rewriting the changed equations. I eliminated, which got me one variable, and then here I am plugging back in, and lastly, summarizing my x comma y answer. Let's see another example. Rewrite problem 2's equation, so pause it and get caught up. 6x minus 2y equals 10, 3x minus 7y equals negative 19. Now if I were to stack these, which I have, it looks like I'd have to try to get 2 to be 7 or 7 to be 2. That looks difficult. But how about getting these to match up? Well, I guess a great call would be to double the second equation and make it negative. So now I'll rewrite the first equation, skipping a line so that I don't think I'm actually doing math from here to here. I'm just rewriting. And I know I'm repeating myself, but I think it's helpful to hear as these problems seem new and a little bit different. And then my new equation says negative 6x plus 14y equals 38. That's probably what will give you mistakes, as by accident just multiplying and getting the wrong results. So keep an eye out for your multiplication there. Um, these terms go away. And then negative 2 plus 14 gives me 12y. And that's going to be 48. Dividing both sides by 12 gives you y is 4, which usually gives you a nice warm fuzzy feeling. And I guess I'll plug this into the first equation, only so that I'm not multiplying by 7. Um, here's 6 times x. We don't know x yet, but I do know y is 4, 10. So then I get 6x minus 8 equals 10. Add 8. Doing this quickly because it's just a two-step equation. 6x equals 18. Divide both sides by 6. And you're going to find that x is 3. Cool. And then I'm going to say x comma y equals 3 comma 4. Box that sucker. Okay, so let's check it. 6 times 3 is 18. Minus 8 is 10. First one's good. 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 28 is negative 19. We're good. Go ahead. Let's make um, 3 an OYO problem. And if you dislike the P and the Q, change it to X and Y. So this will be an OYO problem. Give it a go. And then we will see what the result is. Pause the video. I'm going to put the answer up in 5 seconds. Here you go. All right, I chose to multiply this second equation. You could have multiplied this by a negative 2, which would have been totally fine. I just sort of like to avoid um, larger numbers like this, 13 and 9. So let's see. If you get the same answer as I did, you did it correctly. Okay, so working down. Reminder, um, this is just rewriting the problem and planning. Once I jump down here, I got a different second equation. Solve for y because we were able to eliminate x. Then all the way over here, just plugging in and finding out what x is. And I got 2, negative 5. And when I plug that back in, I get 9 times 2 is 18. Minus 5 is 13. And then I get 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 10 is a negative 4. So they check out in both equations. And if I looked in the back of the book, you'd probably see that p comma q equals 2 negative 5 if it gets listed out. And if you're comparing your work with an answer key, don't worry that you changed it to x and y. Unless you have a very particular teacher, I think they're going to be totally okay with that. We'll stop this video here since it's getting 
uh, towards 10 minutes. And this is the first part where you only multiply one of the two equations to get them to eliminate one of the two variables.